Hello and welcome to today's concert here from the Albion Church in Ashton under Lyne. And we're here for a pipe organ spectacular. Spectacular music played on an absolutely spectacular instrument, this 1895 Lewis organ, uh, which I've played all my life in this amazing building. It's spectacular also because at the end of the concert we're bringing you 1812 Overture by Tchaikovsky a version for one organist. However, we're going to include the bells and the cannons this time, provided by Tom, my brother, who's here filming and recording for you to bring you the sound of this amazing instrument, but also the wonderful windows and architecture of this huge Victorian Gothic church. An incredibly atmospheric place for this concert. So we thought we'd bring you this concert and hope you enjoy watching and listening wherever you are this evening. Now, as I said, I've, I've known this instrument all my life and it's got some amazing colours on it. And we began there with the Marriage of Figaro Overture in a transcription I made for organ solo. And because we're heading into quite a sort of wintry time now, we're into December and heading towards Christmas, uh, I thought I'd include some music which reflected that time of year. As you can see, we've got a Christmas tree behind me um, and I thought we'd incorporate this into the programme. So I'm going to include a piece which is always included this time of year, the Nutcracker by Tchaikovsky. Always in the run-up to Christmas this piece appears, a very famous ballet by Tchaikovsky, first performed in 1892. Now when Tchaikovsky wrote this it's a, it's a huge ballet and people often know the suite from it which is various pieces out of order of the actual uh, the story of the actual uh, ballet, um, but I want to play a piece that comes fairly early on which isn't in the suite, The Forest of Fir Trees. Now it tells the tale of Clara who's received a nutcracker for Christmas, she comes down at night to check it's okay and it turns into basically a handsome prince and leads her to the land of sweets where they have many adventures. However on the way to the land of sweets they walk through a forest of fir trees. It's winter time, the snow is falling and there are gnomes lighting the way with uh, candles and torches. A very peaceful piece and however being Tchaikovsky nothing is ever quite that peaceful. It grows and grows to a huge huge sound. Tom actually requested me to play this when we saw that there's a Christmas tree here and because it's quite a last minute decision as many of the things we sometimes do are you'll notice that I'm still playing off a handwritten manuscript because I only penciled it out yesterday uh, and so this is a very new version for me but uses the wonderful orchestral sounds of this organ. So this is the Forest of Fir Trees in Winter from the Nutcracker by Tchaikovsky. Kowski.
a wonderful piece of music and one that you might not know unless you know the whole ballet by Tchaikovsky. So it's great to be able to share that on this wonderful instrument and those beautiful, beautiful sounds. Staying with the winter theme and the orchestral sound now, a piece by Waldteufel, Emil Waldteufel, um, French composer, uh, who's very famous for one particular piece, the Skater's Waltz. Now, Waldteufel um, had his own orchestra, he was a violinist and conductor, and very well known in Victorian times. In the 1870s, he was sort of discovered by the then Prince of Wales from England, uh, who was to become the future King Edward VII. He was determined to bring Waldteufel's waltzes and music to the English and British audiences and brought him over to England. He performed for Queen Victoria at Buckingham Palace and he became famous overnight. His orchestra was the rival of Johann Strauss's uh, famous orchestra as well and he was a very very popular composer and of course uh, as a waltz and dance orchestra musician. However in 1881 uh, the Seine in Paris froze over in a particularly cold winter. People could drive uh, their sort of horses and carriages onto the river and skate. And so it's thought that Valteufel wrote the Skater's Waltz to depict this. It's a, a collection of waltzes put together, and you begin with this sort of beautiful little uh, horn call almost as the skaters assemble. They sort of spin around a little and set off on their waltz. There's a part halfway through where one of the skaters clearly falls over, it builds up and then finishes. A very sort of graceful piece of music and if you've ever watched anything like films, cartoons, anything, this is the piece which always depicts the sound of snow, winter and Christmas. So this is a version I've done for organ solo. This is The Skater's Waltz by Emil Waldteufel.
As I said, wonderfully graceful and famous music and uh, probably never been heard in this church on, a, on an organ really, uh, but it transfers really well and gives you that sort of very nice, light, crisp, wintry sound. Now, it's great when you perform this music because it all comes from the 1880s, 1890s, when this actual building was built. It would have been the fashion of the time. And at the same time is the next piece that I'm going to play for you, the Prelude and Fugue in E-flat by Camille Sansons. Now, as we head into 2021, Sansons' anniversary of his death occurs. A hundred years since he died. Amazing that it was 1921. It seems sort of so recent in many ways. Uh, but he lived a very long time. He was born in the 1830s and had a full life into well into his 80s when he was still performing just as well as he did when he was a teenager, apparently, by all accounts. A uh, very busy man, he travelled a lot, but also what people forget about him is that he was an organist. First and foremost, a pianist and organist. Um, he was organist at the Madeleine in Paris for about 20 years of his life until the 1870s, and it was here when he was heard by Franz Liszt, he was declared to be the greatest organist in the world. Now, as a church musician, he would probably have improvised more than written music for occasions. However, many years after he'd left, he wrote a set of preludes and fugues, three preludes and fugues written in the 1890s, all dedicated to friends of his, Vido, Gilmon and Gigou. Um, he valued these very highly because when he came to England in 1899, he gave them uh, a recital at Trinity College, Cambridge, where he included all three of these. I'm going to play the third one now, a piece that you might not know. However, it's along very sort of classical lines, which was a, a feature of many of Sanson's pieces. It begins with a prelude. The pedal part's fairly straightforward. The manual part, however, is uh, very distinctive and very pianistic and uh, very reminiscent of the piano concertos and a lot of the figurations you see in them. It's quite short and leads into a sort of a very elegant fugue, which builds and builds and builds to absolute full organ, very grand, uh, something which wouldn't have been out of place in the, in the opera house in many ways, uh, and very, very clean and... Uh, very beautiful melodic lines and sort of quite simple harmony, but very effective and very well written for the organ. It's a brilliant piece. Hope you enjoy it. This is the perfect instrument from almost the same year that it was written. So this is the Prelude Fugue in E flat by Camille Sansons.
Well, it's the moment you've been waiting for, I expect, 1812 Overture. But before I finish, I want to say thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed hearing this wonderful, wonderful instrument. In my opinion, one of the great organs of this country and of the Victorian era. And it's great to be able to hear it in such good condition. Um, it's wonderful to be able to share this wonderful building. And as I mentioned, Tom's here filming and recording and providing something in this last piece now. 1812 Overture was written in 1880. Now, it's a long story. Its actual title is um, The Year 1812, A Grand Solemn Overture for Orchestra. And it's a for large orchestra. And also, you can also have brass bands, choirs, bells, cannons, you name it. Just general, complete racket. Tchaikovsky himself uh, didn't particularly like the piece and said it was just very, very noisy. Uh, however, people do love it, and it's a brilliant, brilliant piece, especially when you know what it's about. The year 1812, of course, was the year when Russia was invaded by Napoleon's army. It begins with the Battle of Borodino, where the Russians retreated uh, against Napoleon's forces. 
And the piece almost follows the story which comes next. At the beginning we have this uh, chorale theme, which is a Russian Orthodox chorale, oh Lord save thy people, as they pray against the forces of Napoleon. Um, there's then some skirmishes as we go along. You hear elements of the Marseille as Napoleon's army uh, attack. Um, but what happened in real life was that when Napoleon's army came into Russia, um, Moscow had been emptied. The Russians had left. They'd burnt a lot of their buildings down. And uh, Napoleon's army was running out of food. It couldn't survive the Russian winter and in the end had to retreat. So after very skirmishes throughout the piece, towards the end, you'll hear that the Marseille comes back, but this time uh, being battled against various sounds, including uh, Russian peasant music and folk songs appear as well. Um, it makes a retreat and then cannons appear. Um, Tom's going to provide these on the speaker system in here for us, as you're about to hear them loud and clear, and at that point they go away, and then the big theme from the opening, the Lord Save Thy People, appears in a very big, big version. I'm going to use all the tubers and full organ on the bottom manual, with the bells of cathedrals to be heard, um, and then it be finishes off with uh, God Save the Tsar, which is a theme which happens at the end, sort of combined with the Marseille theme, uh, finishing off in a huge, huge climax. Now, when this was actually written, it was suggested to Tchaikovsky to write this because it was the anniversary of the 1812 defeat. In 1812, they decided to build a cathedral in Russia, the Cathedral of Christ the Saviour. By 1880, it was nearing completion. So, Tchaikovsky thought he would write this piece to celebrate this. Also, it was the 25th anniversary of Tsar Alexander II, and there was going to be an arts and industry exhibition as well. It gets to 1880. 1812 Overture is written and complete. The cathedral isn't finished. The Tsar has been assassinated um, and it, it takes place in a performance in a tent outside uh, without the cannons and without the bells. And it wasn't until well into the 20th century that recordings were made with the bells and the sounds. However, he did travel to America in the 1890s and opened Carnegie Hall by performing this piece of music. It's a brilliant piece, even though he didn't particularly like it, it's become iconic and it's an amazing piece. I thought I would make a version for organ solo, combining everything, two hands, two feet, and Tom, as I said, is going to provide bells from various cathedrals around the world that we've recorded on our travels, 16 cannon shots, and everything else. So, hold on to your hats, tie anything down that's loose, lock up animals, and be careful now. This is an amazing experience, and I'm very excited to be doing this. This is 1812 Overture by Tchaikovsky. <laughs> 